I am in my car right now. Um, I actually pulled over underneath the tree because the Lord was, uh, well, he told me to pull over <laughs> and share this with you. So I'm going to kind of stall for a minute and see, um, see who gets on here because I believe that there is uh, someone that needs this word today. And hey, Becca. And I am going to share it with you. Hey, Alyssa. Um, so yeah, I would, I think, okay, I was going to leave my glasses on because it's so bright, but I think because I'm under this tree, I can take them off. So now you can see my eyeballs you can see my face. Um, so yeah, I have a, um, I have an awesome word from the Lord that I just want to share. And, uh, yeah, I know I've been, in my last video, I talked about how I'd been going through some stuff and just emotionally, spiritually, just trying to figure out like what, what is, I don't know, what's going on, what's, what's happening in, in my spirit, um, that needs to be dealt with. And so, um, I've done lots of prayer, lots of asking Jesus, what do you want me to get from this? Um, yeah. So like the biggest, the biggest thing that I want to share today is that, um, I don't know where you are right now. I don't know what you're going through, but God does. And this, the scripture says that, um, what does it say? Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy 31, six talks about being strong and courageous and that God will never, um, he'll never leave you or forsake you and forsake means, um, quit on you. Like he's never going to quit on you. He's always constantly going to be pursuing you. He's going to be longing after you. He wants to have a relationship with you. He wants to talk to you daily. He wants you to read his love letters, which is the word of God. He wants you to read that and learn more about him. And in learning more about him, you get to learn more about yourself. You get to learn more about what Christ looks like and you get to learn why you ha need to be that way. You get to learn what, what is it that, that Christ did for us? What is it that Christ wants us to learn so that we can be more like Christ? Because that's what we are called to do. Hey, Amy. And it's just so important for us to know that, to know that God gives us that comfort in times when we don't know how to go on. Hey, Vanita, he gives us, he gives us that oomph to let us get through another day. And that, so my encouragement to you is I want you to know that you are not alone in what you're going through, that Christ has died for us and he has gone through all of the emotions and things that we have gone through. He's been through that. So we can talk to him and know that He's, he's right there with us. He understands and he wants to love on us and help us through it. He wants to come. That's he's, he is our comforter. He wants to comfort us and help us through these things. Um, so I have some, I have some scriptures for you. So the first one was, um, Deuteronomy 31, eight, um, it's so good to know. There's so many scriptures that I could share with you. Like I could just talk about this for a long time because the Lord keeps putting it on my heart to share with you. Um, but, uh, like I said, I don't know what you're going through, but God does. And God is here for you. He wants to talk to you. He wants to, um, see you through whatever this is that you're going through. And here's a really cool part about Jesus. When you are in a relationship with Christ, when you go through a situation or a time and you get to on the other side of it, God gives you this authority in that situation. So the things that I went through in my past, I have authority over that now because I am redeemed through Christ, which means what I've gone through has been washed away by the blood of the lamb, by his dying on the cross for me. What I was, I no longer am. Does that make sense? Is that, is that going over anybody's head or is that just blowing your mind? Do you need to know this, this reminder? Hey, Brandon, um, do you need that? Do you, 
<sighs> hmm. Y'all, this is so good. Stick with me. Um, so another one is John 14, 27. Peace I live with you. But my peace I give to you. God gives us his peace. So no matter what you're going through, that peace that passes surpasses all understanding is given to us through our relationship with Christ. It says, not as this world gives you, but I, but I do. Let your hearts not be troubled. Never let them be afraid. It talks about not being afraid and having no fear. Hey, Mary Ellen, so many times in the Bible, like so many times it says, do not be afraid. It says, do not be anxious for anything. Don't worry about tomorrow. Tomorrow has enough worries of its own. Hey mom. Um, yeah, we have to worry, worry about what's happening right now and today. Well, don't worry, but give it to God. Give whatever situation, whatever circumstance that you're going through, give it to God. Let him handle it. He, he died on the cross for our sins. He bared the weight of our sins and our circumstances and our situations so that he could take it away from us so that we wouldn't have to bear that. We wouldn't have to be burdened with all that is going on. And so give it to Christ. Tell him what you're going through because he already knows. He just wants to hear it from his daughter or his son. He wants to hear that you need help. He, um, uh, I, uh, I can't think of the verse, but it talks about, um, uh, the brokenhearted, like God is with you. He comforts those who mourn. He, um, he, he's with you and he wants to be with you. He wants to help you through whatever it is that you're going through. Um, another one, Psalm 46, one, God is our refuge and strength, very present help in trouble. He is with you. I can't say that enough. He is with you no matter what you're going through, no matter where you are, no matter how far far you've tried to run away from him, no matter how long it's been since you haven't talked to him or you are hoping not to hear what he has to tell you, he's still there and he is still very present in your situation and in your life, even when we don't recognize it as God being with us. Those times where those times where you were saved from something, those times where what could have been that's where God was in your situation. Hey, Brian, God is always with you, whether you want to believe it or not, whether you want to acknowledge him or not. Um, I know that in, in my, um, in my past, there was a long period of time where I, it was kind of a short period, but it felt like forever, um, that I chose not to be in the word. I chose not to go to church. I chose not to pray because this is my thought process because I thought that if I didn't pray, if I wasn't in the word, that I wouldn't have to come to grips with the sin and the ick that I was going through. Um, and I thought if I just don't talk to the Lord, if I just don't confess my sins and just continue, like it's going to be fine. But here's the thing. It's not fine because a sin is a sin is a sin is a sin. It doesn't matter what your sin is. If you are going through it, you need repentance, need to repent from that sin. Ask God to forgive you from it. Take it away. Cleanse your heart of all unrighteousness. Make it as white as snow because he can do that because of his blood that was shed on the cross for us. Whew, preaching to myself today, y'all, but this is good and I'm so glad that you're here to listen to it. Um, another uh, verse for you, Psalm 55, 22, cast your burden on the Lord and he will sustain you. He will never permit the righteous to be moved. He will sustain you. Sustaining is not just being, not just being, not just living, existing, but sustaining. That's giving you more than you need to get through things. That is giving you the strength to rise up. That is giving you the courage and the mercy and the grace that he so freely gives to us so that we can get through our now. We can get through whatever 
ick, whatever gunk we are going through, he's there for us. He will never leave us. Um, another one, I, which I love is, uh, Romans eight. Ooh, now I can't remember what it is. Romans eight something, but it says even in the darkness, even when we were in sin, God still loved us enough to die for us. So even though when I was sinning and I was not listening to him and not praying because I didn't want to have to re realize what, what I was doing was wrong. He still loved me. And even through that, he still died for me and wanted me. Y'all, God wants you. He doesn't care how broken you are. He invites that brokenness because if you feel like there's nothing wrong with you, that you're perfect, like your world is amazing, then you might also think, well, I don't need God because my life is wonderful now. But when you are broken and humble and you bow before the King of Kings and you tell him, I am nothing without you. I can't live another day, another moment without you and your peace and your grace. He will gladly wrap his arms around you and hold you and comfort you while you go through this time. Let him be that for you. Let him be that, that friend that you lay your head on their shoulder and just cry everything out. Let him be that for you. Um, in that, in that darkness, in that sin that you're living through, God still pursues you. Even when you, when I was, even when you don't want to be pursued, even when you want to be just left alone, he's still there for you and he still wants you. There is nowhere you can go. There is, you can't run far enough away from God. You can't do, there is nothing that you can do, big or little, that will scare God and go, Beep. yep, this is all you. Not, not touching that one. There's nothing that you can do. Nothing. Are you hearing me? Are you hearing me? Hey, Marsha. Nothing that you can do. It says, um, Psalm 139, 11 through 12. If I say, surely the darkness shall cover me and the light about me be night. Even the darkness is not dark to you. Talking about God. The night is bright as the day and the darkness is as light with you. When we invite the light, Jesus, into our darkness, into our sin, into our situations, into our hopelessness, into our whatever it is. When we invite that light in there, darkness cannot be. When there's a light in a room, that darkness is overcome. It can't be dark in there anymore because there's light. So when you invite Jesus into that situation, when you invite Jesus into that dark spot, hey, Leslie, he is faithful. Y'all, he is faithful to help you. He is faithful to protect you from harm. That's... I know I keep saying the same, but I just, I, there is someone out there that needs this today. And I want you to know that God's got you. He is, he's got you and he is watching over you and he is protecting you from harm because he loves you so much, so, so much. There's nothing that you could do or have ever done that can take that love away from him. Do you hear me? There is nothing that you can do that has done that. So call to him, call to your Papa God, call to your heavenly father and tell him, I need you right now in this very moment. Give me the strength to press on another day, another second. Lord, be with me, be with me and protect me. Be my, be my strength, be my courage. Lord, be with me. He will honor that. Guys, he loves you with an everlasting love. Do you, do you, give me some hearts if you understand what I'm saying. Give me some hearts if you believe what I'm saying because it is so, just such a powerful message. I just, there's somebody out there that needs this and I, I hope that you're listening and I hope that this is, this is pulling on, tugging on those heartstrings because God's calling for you. Through me, 
he's talking to you, sister, brother in Christ, whoever that is. He wants you. Hey, Sindel, there's my heart. Yes. He wants you, friend. He loves you. I love you. I'm rooting for you. I am praying for you. I am praying life over your situation. I am praying strength and mercy and grace and redemption, Lord. I pray courage over everyone that's watching, Lord. I thank you, Jesus, for these people. I thank you for these brothers and sisters in Christ. I thank you that you never leave us or quit on us, no matter what we do, no matter what we've done, no matter what we say, that you are with us day in and day out, and you love us anyway. Thank you, Father, for redeeming hearts, for the mercy that you give us that is new each and every day. We love you, Jesus. We thank you. Lord, I pray that each, each and every person watching and anyone that watches the replay, Lord, you just give them oodles and oodles and oodles of love and peace and security in where they are right now, Father. Lord, help us, help them all and us to have a great day today and just move forward in your calling, in your destiny, and in, in your will and purpose for their life. I, I adamantly believe that no one on this earth is without a purpose. And that's because God has given us each a purpose and a plan. Um, there's a, a saying that I've written down. We were made and created and born on purpose, for a purpose, and with purpose. Do you hear that? I'm just going to let that settle and sit in for a minute. Lord, we thank you and we love you so much. And it's in your holy precious name that we pray, Father. Amen. Okay. I love you all. Hey, Jamie. I hope that this encourages you. Please share this if you think that someone needs to hear this because I'm in tears. I'm emotional over here because the Holy Spirit wants us to get out and the Lord needs whoever needs to hear this to hear it. Maybe you've heard it many times before, but this is the time where it sticks. I want it to stick for you. I love you, friends. I love you, and I'm rooting for you. Have a fantastic day today. Bye.